The G debate is an interesting one, but Singapore is well ahead of New Zealand when it comes to the issue of biomedical sciences. The government has spent billions of dollars investing in ASTAR, the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, and its flagship Biopolis. I went to check it out. Singapore, in the hub of Asia, launched a biomedical science initiative, bringing together seven public research institutes in one location. It represents the vision the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, or ASTAR, has for the future. And their multi-billion dollar backing for a science hub called Biopolis, which is the brainchild of founding chairman Philip Yeo. And they use research as a basis for creating industry. The idea was to create a campus. So when I took over a job in February 201, I came to this piece of land, which was land was under my jurisdiction once our defense. It was a defense land, a British Army land. I came and looked around here and bought Sydney brand. I said, okay, why don't we build a campus here? Sydney brand looked at me and you're crazy. It would take years. I said, no, no, I'll do it in two years. I think we did it in 18 months. Biopolis may have taken 18 months to build, but scientific research can take decades to bear fruit, as world-renowned cancer researcher David Lane knows. This is the kind of time frame it takes, actually, 20 years or so before a discovery is turned into something of, of benefit. And uh, sometimes we all have to be very patient because we're all naturally impatient, but it's a very exciting time. And uh, we're seeing a lot of that happening in cancer now, discoveries that were made 20 or 30 years ago turning into medicines now. So it does take time, but the, the benefits are really great. It's a very exciting place to do science at the moment, and uh, the government has put a lot of investment into it. There's a real desire to kind of link basic science all the way through to its application. And one of the exciting applications being tested is using nanotechnology to deliver cancer drugs. We have recently developed a nanoparticles that can uh, carry anti-cancer drugs actually more to tumor tissues and also to suppress cancer growth much more efficient when we compare to uh, pure um, anti-cancer drugs without any nano nanoparticle um, transport. Another is using DNA therapy to cure cancer. We're trying to use the stem cells as a vehicle to deliver a therapeutic genes. But another example is to use the virus. Because, well, it sounds dangerous, uh, whatever virus, but the virus we're trying is kind of, uh, they call the insect virus. So originally isolated from the insect cells. And those kind of virus do not replicate in the human cells. So they can deliver a therapeutic DNA but they cannot replicate like uh, other animal virus in the human cell. This can raise a lot of questions, but all research carried out at Biopolis go through their ethics board. Some believe the benefits outweigh the risks. But you think about the problems, you know, the cancer problems. If you don't find out any way, develop any way to treat those patients, they died within one or two years. But sometimes you have to really balance the risk and the, the benefits for the patients. The benefit is also felt here, where pediatric oncologist Dr. Alan Yeo treats the youngest of cancer patients. What we have done is really to capitalize on all these strengths. We, we treat children with uh, leukemia on a protocol, multi-center. We accumulate all these leukemia samples, of, uh, tests of bone marrow of what patients have donated to us. And therefore, we were able to share with Biopolis to rather study just not only in mouse or in cells, but in real patient samples to see whether this really applies true or not in human samples, for example. 80% of children with leukemia are cured up front in NUH where we, our, our, our work is done. The problem is that once they are cured, they live for the next 60 years to 70 years. So therefore we must ensure that they are not damaged in terms of their organs, that they grow well normally and have children and that is cure. If not, we are just survivors of cancer if we damage the body. So therefore we must be very accurate in giving the optimal dose of therapy to get the best cure and the minimal side effects. And that's the balance that we have to really ask and try to achieve. The next phase is Fusionopolis, the operating and commercial arm of the biomedical science future. But it is their 1,000 fully funded million dollar kids who will return to Singapore armed with PhDs and bonded to their country for six years, which Philip Yeo is most proud of. It costs us 500 million. The scholarship costs us 1 billion. People think, oh, the facility is not. It's people. And today we have 700 young people doing PhDs. Hopefully by 2010 we will have awarded about 1,000 PhDs. 
scholarships fully funded by us, costing a billion dollars. Nine years to train a young scientist. So I built a facility, recruit the international scientists. The most difficult is training young people. And that's key. Without this, you achieve nothing. Yeah. Uh, but the key is that governments must be willing to put effort. You need to put your chips on the table. So if we can put our mind to science and bring it to helping some patients, saving some patients, at least we achieve something uh, more noble than just making money. Investing in the future of our country is something we should all be committed to. A more robust debate about the whole GE issue, better understanding about the debate, and clearer guidelines and controls in research. And what we should or should not do with this very powerful technology is something we as a nation must decide. That's all we have this week. Make sure you join us next week. Kakiteano. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.